We'll start it right now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Two things at once. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Good Enter afternoon. your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press. Okay. You are in the meeting now. There are 16 participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Uh, if all those who are not speaking could kindly place your uh, device on mute, that would be helpful. Thank you. Good afternoon. This hearing is being convened for the limited purpose of hearing oral argument in docket number 20-32515-CON. The applicant in this matter, Landmark Recovery of Connecticut, LLC, seeks to establish a new healthcare facility. On December 8th, 2022, the hearing officer in this matter issued a proposed final decision denying the application. On December 29th, 2022, the applicant filed a brief and exceptions and requested an opportunity to present oral argument. On January 31st, 2023, the Office of Health Strategy issued a notice of oral argument for today. This hearing before the Office of Health Strategy is being held on February 14th, 2023. My name is Deidre Gifford and I'm the Executive Director of OHS and I will be issuing the final decision in this matter. Also present on behalf of the agency is OHS General Counsel, Anthony Casagrande. Public Act number 21-2, section 149, as amended by Public Act number 22-3, authorizes an agency to hold a public hearing by means of electronic equipment. In accordance with these acts, any person who participates orally in an electronic meeting shall make a good faith effort to state his or her name and title at the outset of each occasion that such person participates orally during an uninterrupted dialogue or series of questions and answers. We ask that all members of the public mute the device that they are using to access the hearing and silence any additional devices that are around them. This hearing concerns only the applicant's oral argument regarding its brief and exceptions to the proposed final decision, and it will be conducted under the provisions of Chapter 54 of the Connecticut General Statutes. The certificate of need process is a regulatory process and as such, the highest level of respect will be accorded to the applicant and our staff. Our priority is the integrity and transparency of this process. Accordingly, decorum must be maintained by all present during the, these proceedings. This hearing is being transcribed and recorded and the video will also be made available on the OHS website and its YouTube account. All documents related to this hearing that have been or will be submitted to OHS are available for review through our electronic certif certificate of need portal, which is accessible on the OHS CON webpage. Although this hearing is open to the public, only the applicant and its representatives and OHS and its representatives will be allowed to make comments. Accordingly, the chat feature in this Zoom call has been As this hearing is being held virtually, we ask that anyone speaking to the extent possible enable the use of video cameras when speaking during the proceedings. In addition, anyone who is not speaking shall mute their electronic devices, including telephones, televisions, and other devices not being used to access the hearing. Lastly, as Zoom hopefully notified you while entering this meeting, I wish to point out that by appearing on camera in this virtual, virtual hearing, you are consenting to being filmed if you wish to revoke your consent, please do so at this time. However, please be advised that in such event, the hearing will be continued to a later date. We will now proceed. Counsel for the applicant, can you please identify yourself for the record? Yes, Michelle Volpe, Legal Counsel for Landmark Recovery of Connecticut. Thank you, Attorney Volpe. Are there any other housekeeping matters or procedural issues we need to address before we start? Um, not before. Uh, time permitting, there may be some at the end that we just want to note for your consideration. Thank you, uh, Attorney Volpe. You may begin whenever you're ready. 
Thank you. Again, for the record, um, good afternoon. My name is Michelle Volpe, legal counsel appearing on behalf of Landmark Recovery of Connecticut. With me in this virtual proceeding today are representatives from Landmark, in particular, Mr. Jeffrey Berm, Senior Vice President of Acquisitions, um, Attorney Chris Kang, General Counsel for Landmark, Annie Mooney, Vice President of Public Affairs, and other members of the leadership team for Landmark. Thank you, Executive Director, Dr. Gifford, Attorney Casagrande, Attorney Manzione, and all the members of the OHS staff and analysts who've been working on this CON application. We thank you for the time this afternoon and allowing us to appear before you on behalf of Landmark. We know how extremely busy and full the dockets are at OHS. So we're very appreciative that you're allowing us to conduct this oral argument. And we know these proceedings are a large uh, undertaking. We're here this afternoon to respectfully request OHS to reconsider its proposed decision of denial and issue an approval of a CON to Landmark. There is precedent for OHS in doing just this and moving forward with a decision to approve the CON. Um, OHS and its predecessors have taken this very action we are seeking on behalf of other applicants. A vital component of OHS's mission is ensuring access to cost-effective quality care for Connecticut residents. And Landmark's proposal to open the facility in New London is in furtherance of that mission. There is no greater access need for Connecticut residents right now than having cost-effective quality providers to treat the overwhelming substance use disorder plaguing the most vulnerable of Connecticut's residents. Connecticut is in a substance use disorder crisis. And you, Dr. Gifford, you have the foresight and the resolve to address and tackle this crisis head on in your tenure as commissioner for the Department of Social Services. The Herculean effort you undertook that occurred under your guidance and leadership in seeking and more importantly, obtaining the substance use disorder demonstration waiver from the federal government needs to be fully re realized now in Connecticut. The landmark facility proposed in New London for a 48 bed detox and residential substance use disorder treatment center is vitally important and another step in the continuum of action to address the dire need. The Connecticut Department of Social Services definitively stated in its section 11115 waiver application, and I quote, Connecticut is experiencing one of the most significant public health crises in history. In addition, this agency, the Office of Health Strategy, identified in its supplement to the statewide health care facilities and services plan that substance abuse is one of the leading health care needs of most Connecticut communities. Again, the most significant public health care crisis in Connecticut history and Connecticut's health care need growing, it's leading. Direct quotes from key Connecticut agencies working tirelessly to address and provide access to combat substance abuse disorder crisis in Connecticut. Landmark's proposed facility has tremendous support as evidenced by the numerous letters and correspondence submitted on behalf of public servants to your commission. Specifically, New London Mayor Passero, State Representative Anthony Nolan, State Senator Kathy Austin, State Senator Heather Somers, State Representative Christine Conley, State Representative Kathy, Kathleen McCarty, Eastern Connecticut Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Tony Sheridan, New London Homeless Hospitality Center Executive Kathy Zoll, and the New London Director of Human Services, Ms. Milstein. Please know the list of notable persons and public servants supporting the facility that Landmark is looking to put in New London goes on. And we'd like to use this forum to publicly thank them. 
The facts are undisputed, Dr. Gifford. The, doctor, the docket for this CON is voluminous. We recognize that this is a new application for your review, but all the data and evidence set out in the CON, the pre-filed testimony that was attested to at the hearing, as well as all the evidence proffered during the public proceeding is compelling and supports the approval of a certificate of need being granted to Landmark. Please also refer to our legal brief you referenced as you open the proceedings and that we filed in this docket, as well as the exceptions that were taken with the factual findings by OHS in the proposed decision. It is really unconscionable to deny Landmark, an experienced provider with financial wherewithal and a proven track record for treatment of the Medicaid population the ability to bring its expertise and financial resources to Connecticut during this time of crisis. Why deny greater access when every effort should be made to extend more treatment options for those sub suffering with substance abuse disorder? The dire need for SUD treatment cannot go unanswered. People are dying every day from overdose. The patients are overwhelming local hospital emergency departments. Statistics for overdose and SUD have increased all over Connecticut, but particularly in New London. As was set forth in Landmark's application, the Department of Public Health published data for New London County that shows overdose deaths increased in the last few years from 60 to 134, a more than doubling of deaths in New London County alone in a very short period. Landmark is an experienced provider nationally accredited by the Joint Commission for meeting and exceeding industry standards with national awards of excellence and for its superior clinical programs and successful protocols for effectively treating SUD and specifically for caring for the Medicaid population. Landmark has success rates and low readmission statistics to back this up. All the data was set forth in the detail in the CON, as well as in the hearing, and it was methodically put forth in the exceptions and legal brief recently submitted to you. There are many key factual findings and legal conclusions in OHS's proposed decision that we view as erroneous and must be corrected. We would like OHS to apply accurate information to make its final decision approving the CON. As a result of some of the in inaccuracies put forth in the initial decision, it led a OHS to the wrong conclusion with respect to Landmark and its ability to meet all the statutory factors required for your commission to grant a CON. All the statutory factors were in fact met even though not every factor need be satisfied in order for OHS to grant a CON. It must be emphasized that pursuant to law, Landmark is not required to satisfy each and every factor in the statute. This is well documented in OHS's own publications and CON guidance. Out of the 12 statutory CON factors, the proposed final decision correctly determine compliance with the statutes under subsection 2, 4, 6, and 11, while OHS correctly noted that 1 in 12 were not applicable to this application. Specifically, OHS did find that there is a relationship of this proposed project to open the facility in New London directly to the statewide health care facilities and service plan. It also found that Landmark satisfactorily demonstrated how this proposal will positively impact the financial strength of the healthcare system in Connecticut, and that this proposal is financially feasible. In addition, Landmark has satisfactorily demonstrated that the facility that it's proposing in New London will not negatively, will not impact the diversity of healthcare providers and patient choice in the geographic region. Again, OHS has correctly found that many of the statutory criteria required have been met. 
but OHS erred in determining that certain criteria were not satisfied. Specifically, there is a clear public need for the services proposed by Landmark. Landmark has demonstrated how this facility in New London will improve accessibility and cost effectiveness of healthcare in the service area. Landmark has satisfactorily identified the population to be served and demonstrated that the identified population has a need for these services. Landmark's facility will not adversely impact utilization by existing healthcare facilities. And this proposal will not result in unnecessary duplication of existing or approved healthcare services and facilities. There is a clear public need for the services proposed by Landmark. This was detailed in the needs analysis that was set out in the application and further evidenced by the pre-file testimony during the public hearing. It was all done in accordance with OHS's CON criteria. The need was methodically set forth and again in the application and in the exceptions brief. Specifically, Landmark will deliver and meet the American Society of Addiction Medicine residential levels of care. When you query Connecticut's DEMAS bed availability, which is what OHS had relied on, you have to you have to look at an apples to apples comparison. Landmark will be delivering 3.7 level detox and intensive residential care. We know Dr. Gifford, you know what that means. It's essentially Connecticut we view is deficient and lacking in access for beds for this level of care. Connecticut's utilization of, of existing beds by providers when you query Demas it's showing utilization in the high 90s. The national average is around 70s. So Connecticut is well over the national averages. New London County and surrounding communities will absolutely benefit from the landmark facility where on average over 27,000 individuals are suffering from SUD. Opioid emergency room data is not decreasing. It's largely increasing since 2016. Metrics for overdose and substance abuse disorder have increased in the past year significantly, especially in New London County. OHS's proposed decision of a denial does not give the appropriate weight to, this, to these statistics. These statistics are based on OHS's own data and governmental resources. Connecticut residents are dying from substance abuse disorder at alarming rates. The numbers showing no signs of improvement. The stats on OHS's own data have been improperly excluded in its decision in the analysis. Any reasonable review, use and analysis of OHS's own statistics in a finding of public need for more SUD facilities and greater option for Connecticut residents needs to be considered. The Medicaid population has a need for SUD care because facilities have traditionally capped the numbers of beds available to this population. Connecticut's Medicaid program did not historically pay for residential treatment. The state now has a recognized that Medicaid eligibility expansion and the opioid crisis have concurrently increased the need for residential SUD treatment beds. The waiver that was worked hard on by all of the agencies has now allowed Connecticut to benefit from expansion of eligibility to combat the crisis and the ability to increase the need for residential SUD beds. The waiver is one of many actions from Connecticut and the federal government to combat the opioid crisis. The waiver will provide Connecticut with the opportunity over the next five years to demonstrate to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid that SUD treatment, particularly residential treatment, is a necessary benefit for Medicaid residents. Payment for this program would not be possible without the waiver. As stated in the state's waiver application, 
the waiver will permit DSS to provide critical access to medically necessary SUD treatment services in the most appropriate setting with the goal of improving health outcomes for individuals with SUD, including, and importantly, reducing hospital emergency department use and inpatient admissions, reducing hospital readmissions, and improving the rates of engagement and retention for treatment for this population. What we're really asking and what we're imploring OHS is to have a dialogue with Landmark so we can directly hear from you, Dr. Gifford and the OHS staff under what conditions Landmark can be an active provider in Connecticut to combat the crisis. Let Landmark bring its financial resources and expertise to the Connecticut Medicaid population and really to all residents in Connecticut. As stated numerous times, Landmark has significant experience as one of the largest providers in the country treating Medicaid patients, as well as for commercial patients under substance abuse disorders. In its Medicaid waiver, Connecticut has stated the goal, <clears throat> excuse me, is to improve outcomes for Medicaid members diagnosed with SUD by pr providing critical access to SUD treatment services, including inpatient and residential SUD treatment. This amounts really to a mandate from Connecticut to open SUD treatment facilities so it can better serve the population specifically the Medicaid patients. <clears throat> Again, as one of the largest national Medicaid providers, Landmark wants to bring its model to Connecticut. Landmark is specifically seeking a facility in Connecticut to serve the Medicaid population. And now as a direct result of your efforts, Dr. Gifford, and the hard work by DSS and other state agencies, you've been able to obtain needed funds and resources from the federal government to address the cri crisis head on and bring desperately needed resources to the Medicaid population. Connecticut reached a milestone in alleviating the barrier to SUT, SUD treatment for Medicaid patients through the significant effort by DSS in obtaining the Section 1115 waiver. OHS must now follow suit. OHS failure to approve this CON is in direct conflict with that directive. Landmark has satisfactorily demonstrated that the proposal will improve accessibility and cost effectiveness of healthcare delivery in this service area. OHS has co correctly concluded that Landmark demonstrated this in and that it will improve quality of care. However, OHS wrongly concluded that the facility would not improve the accessibility or cost effectiveness of healthcare in the region. One of the most effective approaches Connecticut can implement to relieve the burden on hospitals and their emergency rooms for this population is treating addiction patients in a different setting through a landmark facility. Treating these patients in the hospital setting in the ER is costly and it delays care for other patients who are appropriately utilizing hospital ERs. ERs are the most expensive healthcare door for SUD patients. It's also increasing the cost to the Medicaid program when providers are forced to treat this population in the ER. Most hospitals are not staffed nor equipped to deal with this population. More quality cost-effective residential facilities working hand-in-hand -hand with other community organizations is the answer to combat the crisis and alleviate the ineffective care to the population. Landmark has been in active discussions with state agencies, in particular DEMAS, and has proactively reached out to all agencies in Connecticut to help address and serve the Medicaid population. The outreach is detailed in the correspondence shared with OHS and is set forth on the record. And we urge you to correct the findings of fact 
and make only the appropriate determination that can be concluded, and that is Landmark will improve accessibility and cost effectiveness for SUD patients. <clears throat> Landmark has satisfactorily identified the population to be served by the uh, facility that's being uh, set forth in New London. Landmark has satisfactorily demonstrated that the population, there is a need for these proposed services. OHS has wrongly asserted that Landmark did not identify the population to be served. There should be no misunderstanding or doubt as to the population that will be served by the facility. And it is well established that the facts support the need for these services. OHS failed to acknowledge that existing providers are not enough. There is no lack of demand. The statistics clearly show Connecticut residents are not accessing care and deaths are growing. The patients are there, but they're not being brought into residential treatment facilities by existing providers. This is on account of many reasons. One is the level of care that these patients need and deserve. At least one provider in the proceedings admitted that not only it's only able to fill 50% of its beds due to staffing shortages. Landmark went into detail on the record how it attracts and retains needed staff, including recruiting out of, out of state staff and providing initiatives for individuals to move to Connecticut to help work in their facilities and service the population. Landmark has a successful track record of letting people know that it is available to treat this population and getting the patients into the treatment and offering the level of care that's needed. Again, you know what we're referring to when we refer to a level 3.7 uh, purposes of care for the Connecticut population. Landmark's proposed program will not adversely impact utilization of existing healthcare providers. The proposed decision initially offered incorrectly states that there will be an adverse impact on existing providers. You can't merely rely on a query from DEMAS of bed utilization on any given day. This is severely misplaced in relying on that as a need analysis. A snapshot of a number of available beds in a given day is not indicative of lack of need in Connecticut. It is not reflective any, of any historical trend or average. It is not reflective of existing facilities' ability to fill their beds due to their own operational deficiencies, as well as not maintain the appropriate level of care that's needed. It is clear from the record that other facilities are operating at lower capacity because of their inability to maintain staff and not offering the requisite level of care. Vacancies reflect these inefficiencies and a failure of a broken system that is currently in place. Moreover, state agencies like DEMAS clearly recognize this and the record reflects that regulators have welcomed Landmark to discuss how it can help. In fact, OHS asked Landmark if it planned to work with D DEMAS and the emergency departments, and the ref record reflects that it will, and it has already begun these, these discussions, all with the relevant constituencies. So, we want to also point out that Landmark's proposed project will not result in unnecessary duplication of existing or approved healthcare services. How can it? All the state agencies have gone and sought additional money from the federal government to provide more treatment to Connecticut residents. OHS has determined that the proposed facility will be duplicate. That is incorrect. There, with the waiver, more beds are needed to, to be available to the Medicaid population. As Landmark clearly established, patients who end up in the emergency room or who die from overdoses are lives that could have been saved with SUD treatment. Existing providers in the state regularly rely on overdose data and emergency room visits to establish need. 
These same statistics were used to support additional beds by existing providers and were approved by OHS. Lamar provided evidence that OHS stated in its own statewide health plan that persons with behavioral health issues often access needed care through hospital emergency departments and inpatient hospitalizations, straining the resources of hospitals that may not have appropriate behavioral health services to combat this crisis. OHS incorrectly cited to the number of other providers and open beds listed at a moment in time as evidence that services would be duplicative. As previously outlined, the number of open beds is not indicative of a lack of need on account of staff shortages or some of these facilities only accepting single sex individuals. And also based on the level of care offered at these facilities, which many are, are not offering the level of comprehensive care that's required for residential treatment. This is not reflective of a trend or an average. It's really just a warning sign that existing providers are not meeting all of the current unmet need in Connecticut. And again, there is a need for more beds in Connecticut to treat the population. OHS failed to acknowledge that vacancies are a result of existing providers failing to meet the highest level of care pursuant to the ASAM criteria. That's the American Society of Addiction Medicine. Lamarck's approach is that every single provider in Connecticut should be working together on this mission and encouraging people to seek help they need. By denying the CON and not allowing Lamarck to come to Connecticut and bring its established national provider reputation with a proven record of successfully treating SUD and that OHS is in effect perpetuating the failing status quo in the midst of the SUD epidemic and one of the largest healthcare crises to face Connecticut. Those are words of Connecticut's agencies, not landmarks. Landmark services are not duplicative. They are innovated and desperately needed. Landmark's commitment to the Medicaid population is one that has never been seen in the state before. Landmark has provided convincing and compelling evidence that its patients benefit from specific clinical protocols that it's established. Landmark provided evidence that its protocols and outcomes data show there is an enhanced clinical experience. Landmark is unique among SUD providers, and there is clear evidence that Connecticut desperately needs this facility. And while we've spent a lot of time noting how Landmark meets all the statutory criteria, I would be remiss if I didn't again detail and reiterate some of the procedural errors and irregularities with this application that really resulted in an adverse impact on Landmark's rights. The procedural path has been inconsistent and the statutory requirements have been prejudiced to Landmark that you've cited. The procedural errors have led to the unacceptable result of allowing intervener all the rights and benefits of a contested hearing while depriving Landmark of such rights and benefits. And we'd ask that you look at that on the record. We know that this is an area ripe and in the midst of judicial review. But again, Landmark was prejudiced by the procedural errors that occurred um, through, at OHS during this time. We're reserving all of our rights with respect to that, including filing an administrative appeal. So I, I wanna be respectful of the time that's been afforded to us. And I wanna thank you today for this time, but we wanna raise that Landmark has demonstrated substantial public and community support for the facility. The application includes numerous letters that have been submitted by local leaders. Just this morning, Dr. Gifford, a joint letter of, of support was provided by New London Mayor Passero 
State Senator Austin, State Representative McCarty, State Representative Nolan, State Senator Somers, State Representative Conley, and Eastern Connecticut Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Tony Sheridan. OHS's denial of Landmark's facility is not aligned with the community or local leaders, all of whom are behind this project. OHS's denial is also inconsistent with other state agencies and the significant work accomplished under your leadership at DSS, Dr. Gifford. We encourage OHS to please review the record and correctly determine that Landmark's facility will serve the residents of Connecticut during this crisis. OHS has made this determination in other CONs and Landmark should be afforded the same application of law to the facts. OHS must look at the reliable and substantial evidence in the record, which unequivocally favors the approval of Landmark's application. Landmark sub submitted compelling documentation to establish and support the public need in every statutory criteria that requires, that is a requirement of the CON. You, if you review the completeness questions, the pre-filed testimony, as well as all the testimony and evidence proffered during the public hearing, in addition to the documentation requested in the late file, and the exceptions in legal brief that we submitted to you, based on all this evidence in the docket, Landmark meets the statutory criteria. We implore OHS to permit Landmark to come to Connecticut and provide SUD treatment and care. We respectfully request OHS issue a final decision approving the CON or please, at a minimum, engage in discussions with Landmark for an agreed settlement that addresses any concerns that OHS has with the application. We are confident we can meet any conditions or demands that your office would like to see addressed by you, Dr. Gifford, Attorney Casagrande, and all the OHS analysts. Please don't deny Landmark the ability to engage in dialogue with you to arrive at terms that meet all of your expectations. Landmark stands ready, willing, and able to meet the residents suffering from substance abuse disorders in Connecticut, and in particular, the Medicaid population. And I wanna thank doc you, Dr. Gifford, and the entire OHS staff for your time this afternoon. We know how committed you all are to your work and we appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Attorney Volpe. Um, thanks to all of you for attending today. Um, I will issue a final decision in accordance with Chapter 54 of the General Statutes. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you.